station. This is Houston. Are you ready for the event? Ready for the event. Wonderful. It's great to see you, Commander Williams. You just set a record for spacewalks. What was that like to uh, be uh, the woman who has walked more hours in space than any other? You know, um, it's all sort of a matter of happenstance. I was really lucky to be in the astronaut corps when we were building this amazing International Space Station and had the opportunity to do a, a number of construction uh, spacewalks. And then, you know, coming up here this time, it was not the plan, but we were ready. You know, Butch and I prepared and we're fully up, uh, ready to do anything for the ISS. So, um, so it was maybe good fortune that we got to do it. And a, a couple of the spacewalks were some pretty critical things and we were able to get it done. For those of us stuck here on Earth who will never walk in space, can you tell us what it's like? Is it ever something that you forget you're out floating in the middle of space while you're doing it? So yeah, it's, it's a surreal experience, I'll, I'll say that. And you know, there's a, there's a lot that goes into it. You know, the spacesuits are just amazing. I, I, I hug mine every time I come back in because it keeps us alive. It's our, it's our own little spacecraft. You know, when you open the hatch and you go outside, of course, how could you not be a little bit nervous? I'm, a, I'm always a little bit nervous, but you know, there's a task at hand that you're gonna get, get on it and get going. So, you know, I think you put that little bit nervousness aside and just go out and do what you've trained to do. But then again, you look outside and you see the earth all of a sudden right outside your visor and you can't forget where you are and it's just an amazing experience. We noticed that on the spacesuit, which you said you hug when you come back in, that it says believe. What, is that, uh, what does that mean for you? There's a lot to that, right? Um, you know, that, that's, that sign comes from the uh, a TV show, which maybe you know. One, two, three, three, five! And that, that show is like just a lot of good anecdotes about leadership and teamwork. And I think it also, of course, you know, we can get this stuff done and just got to believe. Is got to believe part of what's gotten you through your extended stay? Absolutely. You know, I mean, it's a risky business, right? We all know that. And, you know, spacecraft, space suits, you know, it, it's a matter of uh, thousands of people getting it right over with a lot of equipment, a lot of engineering, um, a lot of creative ideas to get it done. And, you know, I have faith in our team and, you know, we're, we are up here for a reason. We believe in the process. We believe in what we're doing. What we're doing is, is good for humanity. We're doing incredible science up here. I mean, stem cell research, you know, bioprinting, you know, 3D printing. I mean, it's, it's just amazing. So this is just an incredible station and um, I think we're doing, doing the right thing. In terms of your extended stay, I think for people who, you know, might have had a, a layover in Philly or something, they find it hard to get their head around staying longer. Where did you find the patience, Sonny? Uh, you know, those people have the ability to go get a latte, so they shouldn't complain too much. Are you missing uh, the lattes? And if not a latte, what are, you, uh, what are you looking forward to when you get back? My husband is a, makes a good latte, so I'm, I'm looking forward to his latte. I'm also looking forward to uh, seeing the rest of my family and my dogs and jumping in the ocean. I think uh, that will be really nice to just be back on Earth and feel Earth that way. Is that the sunrise out your window that we're seeing? Oh yeah, right out, right out my left side right here. So yeah, it's, it's beautiful. You know, of course you want to look for your home. You know, I'm from New England, so I, I see you guys in New York. Uh, but also you can just see how our planet is alive, how the clouds are moving. It's just, it's just incredible. The ocean is changing. It's just an amazing place to hang out. And I understand you've been uh, able to talk to your mom pretty regularly. Uh, what do you tell her when you're on the phone to her from outer space, which she might not have expected her daughter to be making calls from outer space when you were a toddler? Yeah, she, I think she she's l likes it, but I think, um, you know, I think she's waiting for me to get home. I think she would prefer that we were at home together and, uh, you know, going on a, a road trip. So, yeah, I try to call her pretty much every day just to check in and see how she's doing and stuff like that. I like hearing about what she's doing. She's up to uh, a playing a bunch of bridge games and things like that. So I, I get the play by play and it's nice to just have a normal conversation with her because I, I know uh, every moment I'm up here is not having time with her, but we'll do that when I get home. We hear that uh, you might, there might be some news about you coming home sooner than expected. What have you heard about that? 
So yeah, I think decisions are starting to get made about how uh, you know the crew ten is going to get up here, and then of course that's a handover between the two crews, and then um, how we're going to come home. You know, there's a possibility we'll come home a little sooner than we had um, thought about a little while ago. So we'll see how it all works out. You know, there's a, like I said, a lot of uh, things up in the air, um, but you know, you got to make a decision. You'd be happy to come home earlier, though, yes. Well, you know, I, I want the right decision to be made, right? So in the best interest to, of all of us, right, of uh, Crew 10, of course, and us. So I, I'm, I'm happy either way. You know, eight days turned into a couple more months than that, a couple more months, whatever, it, does, it doesn't really matter. The right decision just has to be made. Help me understand something. Last week, President Trump said you and uh, Butch Wilmore, who is your Starliner uh, crewmate, had been, his, this is the president's words, virtually abandoned. Do you feel abandoned up there, Commander? No, I, I don't think those words are quite accurate. You know, uh, I've, both Butch and I have lived up here on the space station before. We know what it's about. Uh, we know how, you know, how NASA and our commercial um, partners work together. So, you know, we expected that we would be up here for a little while. And even, and even when the decision was made to return Starliner, we knew that it would be an extended stay because we're part of a bigger group you know we're part of, a, of something bigger than ourselves we're part of the international space station and we have you know obligations to our international partners to uh, do science and uh, exploration while we're up here so yeah we knew this was going to happen so no we're, we don't feel abandoned we feel like we're part of the team and that's a, a huge honor so to think of you as being stuck up there or abandoned does that basically misunderstand the role of an astronaut I, I would I would say that's absolutely true. You know, I don't think I'm abandoned. I don't think we're stuck up here. We've got food. We've got clothes. We have a ride home in case anything really bad does happen to the International Space Station. We're in a posture that, um, you know, that we, we should be where we have the International Space Station fully manned and doing what the taxpayers wanted to do is to do world-class science. And so I, I feel honored, like I said, to be here and a part of the team. Explain for people, you could have gone, your ride home is, a, is attached to you, right? You could have gone home, but it's a part of the mission to stay. Is that right? Help me understand that. Sure, it could have taken us home, but that leaves only three people on the space station from the Soyuz crew, two Russians and one American. And you know, the space station is big. It's a building and it, you know, it's the size of a football field and, you know, things happen. So things can go wrong and you need to be able to fix it either inside and outside. And so having additional people to be able to do that, that capability is really important. And it's, you know, part of our obligations to our international partners to keep this International Space Station vibrant, going and doing, inter, you know, research, world class research. I think Butch and I did over 500 hours of science experiments while, we, while we've been up here and also do research on ourselves as long duration crew members up here. So that's, it's all additive and beneficial. So our, and our families understand that too. You know, they signed up to, with this just like we did. So I think it's all for the good. In modern uh, space exploration, is the kind of adaptation that you've had to learn uh, crucial if we're gonna be going to Mars or, or any of those long haul activities, won't the astronauts of the future need adaptability and the ability to basically have the patience you've demonstrated? You know, it, it is part of the game. You know, a lot of our, you know, fellow compadres in the military have to do the same thing when deployments get extended. And you just have to, you know, go with the flow, look at the bright side of it, and, you know, think of how you're contributing. And I think that's an overwhelming feeling of, you know, pride that we could serve our country this way. Sonny, the window is about to close on us, but so as a last question, what is the coolest thing, the, made, the thing that made your skin tingle that you just thought, wow, in the time that you've been up there? We have had some of the most amazing aurora while we've been up here. We've flown through it. So the window around you was like all full of green all around us. And that is pretty spectacular. And to understand that there's things in the universe that are so much more powerful than we can even imagine on Earth, I think that's what blows my mind. And it, it reminds me that, you know, uh, we're, we're lucky to be here. Commander Sonny Williams, thank you so much. It's been an honor talking to you. Thank you, John. Have a great night.